Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this video I'll show you how to build a modulation ring like the ones used in Massive to display the depth of modulation for a given parameter. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new Reactor content once a week. So to begin, I'm going to start in Knob Man, which is a program for creating custom graphics um, specifically designed around UI elements such as knobs and the like. If you don't own Knob Man, it's a free download and I'll uh, put a link in the video description. I'm going to start very simply by creating a circle object with a width of 15 and we're going to use this as our modulation ring. Alright, so next up we want to use the mask function to make it so only a small portion of the circle is visible at any given point in time. If we set the mask to be visible only between the ranges um, of negative 140 degrees and negative 135 degrees, uh, you'll see we only have a very small sliver of our circle being visible. Alright, so Knobman creates framed images which comes in handy quite often, for example with um, graphic user elements such as knobs, where you create a knob that can be in one of ten different positions, for example, and um, depending on the position of the knob, um, you can change which uh, frame which frame within the image to display at once. So what I want to do is create a um, image with a bunch of frames here and each frame displays a small portion of our circle that we created earlier. So to do this we change the starting and stopping point of our mask with each um, given frame. So I'm going to have the starting point move from negative 140 to positive 135. I'm going to have the stop point move from negative 135 to positive 140. And by using the test function, we can see that we're getting um, a bunch of different little circle fragments here. And we can set the total number of frames in the preferences tab here. Um, so we're going from a total of negative 140 degrees to positive 140 degrees, which is a total of 280 degrees in a circle. Um, each frame is displaying 5 degrees, so 280 divided by 5 degrees equals 56 frames that we want to export here. So we can use the export image function and make sure you name the file as a TGI, TGA file for Reactor to open. And that's it for our knob man. Now let's open up Reactor and create a new macro. And this macro is going to display our modulation ring. I'm going to use a multi-display module to do so and we're going to set that up with an iteration module at the beginning of um, the initialization process in Reactor. So let's load up the image we just created in the function tab of the multi-display properties. Make sure you set to have a alpha channel with 56 frames and our iteration module is going to address each of those 56 frames individually um, so we're going to have our first event equal to 1, each subsequent event increased by 1, and we'll have 55 extra events. So this iteration module is going to have events ranging from 1 to 56. The first thing we want to do is set the index of our multi-display. And next we can set the object to be equal to the index. And so here we're creating 56 um, objects with our multi-display module and making sure that e each index um, coincides to a particular frame within the uh, image we just created. So we also need to make sure we have our number of objects set to 56 in the multi-display display properties. 
And while we're there, I'm going to uncheck the object and alpha ignore tabs. So this means we can set each index to have its own object type and alpha value. Next, I want to make sure the x2 and y2 values of each frame are equal to 1. So this is just going to make sure that our image is visible. When we set the multi-display to be always active, um, we have some errors. Just make sure all the modules you use um, that connect directly to a multi-display end up being mono. And we see that all of our uh, 56 frames are displayed on top of each other when we go to the panel. So next up, we want a way to set which frames are visible and which frames are invisible at any given point in time. So to do this, I'm going to create two inputs to our macro called center and mount. And we're going to use these two values to decide which frames are visible. Um, in conjunction with another iteration module, we're going to iterate through each index value and check whether or not it's visible whenever re we receive a new center value or a new amount value, which is the depth of the modulation. So each of these is going to get an order module, and we're going to um, connect directly to the iteration module with that after we do a little bit of simple math. So we want to both add and subtract amount um, to the center value. And this is going to give us the um, maximum and minimum values that are visible for our modulation ring. And we want to compare these values to the values we're creating with our iteration module. All right, so next let's create another iterator. And we're going to hit it with a value of 1 whenever we get a new value from either our center input or our uh, amount input. So we can merge the two outputs from our center and amount order modules um, to trigger the iteration. And we're going to end up wanting another merge module because this iterator and the previous iterator are both going to control the index of our multi-display. So we'll need a, another merge module for the index input. All right, so both the center and the amount inputs should have values ranging from 0 to 1. Um, so we're going to want the output of our uh, iteration module here to also be ranging from 0 to 1. So I'm going to divide our output that's currently ranging from 1 to 56 by 56. Um, compare to see if we are both greater than the smallest value and less than the largest value. Um, we can use a logic and module for that. And that's going to control the alpha value of our multi-display module. And so if the alpha is equal to 0, the frame will not be displayed. And if it's equal to 1, it will be. And let's just create ourselves a couple knobs in the structure um, to test out how this works. Alright, so we can see things are working uh, very similarly to the knobs in Massive. Uh, I haven't had time to set up the control for this to be anything exciting. Um, obviously using these two knobs here is a little clunky. Um, if there's interest, I can definitely get into that in a future tutorial. Uh, once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, please check out our website.
Um, if there's anything you'd like to see from us in the future, please let us know. You can comment on this video um, or on the Reactor forums, or you can email me at salamanderanagram at gmail.com. All right, I'll see you guys again next week.